Okay, let's talk about enzymes. In particular, let's talk about the reaction where a substrate S is converted to a product P at a rate V. Now, we can plot the reaction rate against the substrate concentration and I'll get a curve that looks something like that. Now in this diagram I've shown the uh, concentration in square brackets so you'll often see uh, in books something like this. You have, a, you have a compound X and they have a square bracket around them. That means concentration. Uh, I'm going to dispense with that because it just I think it just clutters things up a little bit but bear in mind that uh, whenever you see uh, an X, an S or a P or whatever in one of my equations it means a concentration. Okay? Alright. So this is the curve we get if we were to plot the reaction velocity against S. The ex actual experiment here is where we, we take some enzyme, we add a, speci uh, a specific amount of substrate and then we immediately measure the reaction rate. We measure the reaction rate before too much S is consumed. And we do this again and again, but using different starting amounts of, or different starting concentrations of S. And when we do that, we get a curve that looks like this. So it, at zero concentration down here, of course, there's zero velocity. It rises linearly, and then reaches a plateau, and this plateau is called the V max. Okay, so the reaction velocity doesn't exceed that maximum velocity. So what I want to do is I want to derive an equation that, des that describes this uh, curve. Um, let's begin then by writing out the enzyme mechanism that is used to describe enzyme catalysis. So the enzyme mechanism involves free enzyme binding to free substrate to form an enzyme substrate complex and then we assume that this enzyme complex undergoes some transformation that releases free enzyme again plus now the product. Okay, now the rate of reaction is the rate at which P is being produced and that is basically equal to the rate of this reaction and this reaction is governed by the concentration of enzyme substrate complex. So the rate of reaction must equal, well this is a first order reaction, so it must equal, let me put the rate constant here, it must equal the rate constant, K3, times the concentration of ES. So let me just emphasize again, I haven't used square brackets here to indicate the concentration of ES, so if you see something like this it means concentration. Okay, so this is first order, this is a, mass, a first order mass action reaction. We're assuming that the reaction rate here is directly proportional to the concentration of ES. In other words, if I double ES, I double the, the rate. If I halve ES, I halve the rate. And this is related via this proportionality constant or this rate constant, K3. Now, somehow I've got to do something with this ES. Obviously I don't have access to ES, but I do have access to S, and somehow I have to uh, relate S to ES, so then I can, you know, produce this curve. So I'm going to have to make some assumptions here to get this moving. So one of the, one of the simplest assumptions you can make is that when E binds to S to form ES, and ES breaks down, of course, to form E plus S, that this reaction is so rapid that it's pretty much always in equilibrium. Okay, so there's always in equilibrium. And so there's an equilibrium constant associated with this reaction, which we'll call KD, or the dissociation constant, and that's related to the concentration of E times the concentration of S divided by the concentration of ES. So I'm going to assume that for, for this purpose that throughout the time of the reaction, this ratio always equals KD. Now, I can get ES on its own. Um, basically, I want, let me, let me just show you, I can get ES on its own. So ES equals E times S divided by KD. And it's this ES I want to basically insert in here. The problem here is, of course, well, I've got S here, but I've got this E, and I also don't have access to E, so I've sort of replaced one thing I don't have access to, which is ES, with another thing that I don't have access to, which is E, but I can get around that. So, for the moment, I'm going to use um, this relation here, and I'm going to combine this with the following. I'm going to state that the total amount of enzyme equals the amount of free enzyme 
plus the amount of enzyme substrate complex. Now I can rearrange this to get free enzyme on its own. I'm going to simplify E total just to ET uh, minus ES. Okay, so now I'm just saying that the amount of free enzyme is the amount of total enzyme minus ES. Now the amount of total enzyme I have because that's the amount of enzyme I actually added to, to the mixture in my experiment. So I have that. So why don't I now insert this into here. All right, now I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this equation here because it'll, be, um, it'll be a bit easier. So let's do that. So KD. Actually, let me bring the ES up. KD times ES, okay, equals E. Well, E is now going to be ET minus ES, all multiplied by S. Okay, so all I've done here is substituted this equation here into E, and I've brought ES up to, up to here. Okay, that's all I've done. So let's multiply this out. KD times ES equals ET, S minus ES times S. Now I'm going to bring this one over to this side. So I'll get KD times ES. Note that the minus now turns into a plus, so plus ES times S equals ET times S. I can um, bring out ES onto its own, so ES times KD plus S equals ET times S. Now I can now I can get ES uh, on its own by dividing both sides by KD plus S and that's when I get this. So I'm getting quite close now. KD plus S. So what I'll do is I'll insert this into here. Alright, so when we do that, the velocity then equals K3, K3 times ES which is ET times S over KD plus S. So that's, uh, I'm almost there, so let's go to a new page and continue. Uh, so let me just write down what we just had, K3 times ET times S, KD plus S. Now this thing here, this term here, K3 ET, I'm going to call V max, and that'll become clear in a minute. What I want to look at are the, how this behaves. So let's um, draw V versus S. So what happens at low S? So let's consider low S. So uh, I'll call that V max. Um, S over K D plus S. At low S, okay, at low S, this S is so small that it, K D dominates the denominator. So I have basically a constant here times S. That's a first order reaction. In other words, the reaction velocity is directly proportional to V. So at low S, I'll get some kind of straight line. What happens at high S? So at high S, let's write this down again. So now at high S, when this is large, S dominates the denominator, so I can pretty much ignore the dissociation constant. If I do that, of course I can cancel the S's, and so at high S, V tends to V max. So V tends to V max, so it'll curve up and do that, and that's fine V max. Oops, my V max. Now this equation here, V equals V max, times S. You'll sometimes find, well in many cases actually, that people change the KD and call it KM. And they call it KM because this equation is actually called, after the people who derived, first derived it, the Michaelis Menten, Menten equation. Okay, this is the equa uh, this is the Michaelis Menten equation. And as I said, often you'll find people using the Km there instead. And this is often called the Michaelis constant. Okay, the Michaelis constant. All right. Um, and of course, then it's called the Michaelis Menten equation. Okay, that finishes this video. Thank you.